Today, I want to show you a DIY method of making polyurethane engine and transmission mounts. But first, let me say just a few words about why you should do this the DIY way uh, instead of just buying ready-made uh, polyurethane engine and transmission mount inserts. Uh, now, the first reason is going to be cost. Uh, for my car, my uh, MR2 Mark I, uh, to buy just the front and rear mounts uh, made out of polyurethane and that's just two out of four mounts uh, would cost me $160. Now that's without shipping or anything. Uh, what I'm going to do today is going to allow me to do all four of the mounts and it's going to cost me uh, around $25. So, as you can see, the difference is, is pretty big and the results uh, and the benefits are the same. Uh, now the second, uh, the second reason why you should why you should do this yourself is uh, is the ability to customize uh, the stiffness of your mounts. Uh, now uh, aftermarket mounts, uh, all uh, for most cars usually come in just one uh, short hardness. So what is short hardness? Uh, short hardness is um, the it's the measure of stiffness of a rubber compound. So for example, the aftermarket mounts you can find out there. Uh, most of them are ADA short hardness. So compared to the stock, uh, which is usually around 40A short hardness, that is twice as, as, as stiff. And that might be okay for a track car, but for something that you want to drive on the street, even if just occasionally, uh, that's going to be too stiff. Uh, the car is going to be uncomfortable, uh, everything is going to rattle, uh, and there's going to be, honestly, far too much vibrations in the cab. So if you're doing this yourself, uh, and the way I'm going to show you, you are going to be able to select the stiffness of your mounts and uh, you will be able to get exactly uh, the results you want based on the application uh, you have of your car. So in my case, uh, I'm getting a 60A short hardness, uh, which is a very nice compromise between, for example, the perhaps a bit too soft 40A, which is the stock rubber, and the uh, track day oriented. ADA of the aftermarket mount. So I'm getting better responsiveness and, and all the other benefits of polyurethane mounts while trying to uh, minimize, uh, uh, minimize the downsides. So that's it for the benefits and now uh, I'm going to show you uh, exactly how to do this. So uh, what's the big secret behind my method and how I'm going to, you know, get us all this work done for, for $25. Well, the secret is, uh, it's really not a secret at all, it's actually just using liquid polyurethane instead of buying ready-made aftermarket stuff. So, as, as you can probably tell, uh, liquid polyurethane is, again, polyurethane, but uh, in a liquefied form. So what you do is, you get the liquid polyurethane, and instead of buying a finished uh, ready-made insert and you know pressing it in, you actually pour the polyurethane into the mount and make a new mount. The, once the polyurethane dries, you'll have a very stiff uh, polyurethane, high quality mount and the level of stiffness you want. Now, to get to the, to the point of actually being able to pour the polyurethane in, uh, you will need to get the old stuff out. Now, you will need to get the old mount out regardless of whether you spend the money and buy an aftermarket thing or if you decide to pour the mounts yourself. So uh, getting it out is, 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 to be honest, a bit harder than it sounds, and there's a bit of work involved, and it's a pretty messy process. Now, uh, the first thing you need to do is, is and I'm gonna show you this on my other mount, where, I'm already, where I've already done this, is actually to get the old insert out. As I don't know if you can tell, but uh, this is not just rubber inside a bracket, but it's as, as you can see, it's a steel ring where the rubber is inside and there's this pin inside. And that is pressed inside of the mount bracket. Now, if you have a sharp press, that would be great. You can actually press it out. But if you don't, don't worry. You can actually get it out with, with a bit of brute force. And what you need is, is a chisel and a hammer. So, how you do it is, is you get the, you, you put the chisel right in between the bracket and, and the mount insert and you basically try to try to knock out the, 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 the mount in this way. Uh, after you have done that, after you've, uh, after you've gotten the mount out, uh, what you need to do is, is, separate, uh, is separate the pin from the rubber. 
Uh, now, uh, this is, uh, I'll be honest with you, this is by far the nastiest step of the whole process. And it's going to, it's going to smell bad, it's going to look bad. Because the only way to, uh, to, get, uh, to get the rubber, uh, to get the pin, sorry, to get the pin uh, out of the rubber is actually to burn the rubber away. Okay, the last step after you've gotten the pin free from the rubber is just to, uh, to just to clean the pin and clean the uh, inside of the of the mount bracket, and you are ready to uh, to to pour your uh, pour your thing. Yeah. We're back and we're on the kitchen table, and the mounts have been set up and ready to receive the pour thing. Uh, as you can see, this looks a bit weird, but it's actually uh, very simple, and it's going to help me. Uh, get the po uh, polyurethane inside of the mounts and keep the pins in their original positions and also keep polyurethane from spilling out. So, as you probably are aware, getting polyurethane into a mount that is basically hollow is not that simple. So, what you actually have to do is, number one, you have to block the underside, which I have done with a piece of cardboard that I have cut up to the size of the mount and that I have used to accurately position the pin based on the photos I took earlier. That's number one and number two you have to keep the mount straight uh, so the polyurethane doesn't uh, spill over or so that it doesn't set in an uneven uneven way. As you can see I've used some boards and some <laughs> some copy paper just to just to keep the mount straight. So the first thing I have done is is uh, to basically sand the the pins and the inside of the mounts to keep the surface as rough as possible so the polyurethane has something to stick to. Uh, and then I have, what I have done, I have used the mounts themselves as stencils to cut shapes into the cardboard and I have uh, done some calculations and measurements to, to be sure that the, the pins are this, in the same place as they were originally uh, within the mount um, as, as stock. So what I'm actually trying to say is some of the pins aren't 100% in the center of the mount rather they are shifted either upwards or downwards or in, or in a certain direction. So I have, that's why I've taken photos in the beginning to be sure uh, where the mount is and I have made measurements and I have replicated this uh, on the cardboard and the last thing I have done is basically glued this piece of cardboard to the underside of the mount and set it up as you can see. Okay guys, so finally here's the secret weapon. As you can see and as I have already told you it's work with polyurethane. thing. As you can see, it comes in two parts, and uh, you mix it, pour the part, two parts in together, mix them well in, and pour them in into wherever you want to pour them. So what I'm using is is called RealFlex 60. It's from a company called Smoothon. Uh, I'm no way affiliated with the company or supported or have received any advertising, anything. I just bought it off the shelf like everybody else, and I'm giving you the name because it's a good product. It's it's a decent price and. Uh, and, and it's honestly, it's very widely available. You can buy this online or you can find it in um, special effects stores or, or uh, Halloween supply stores. So there, it's in a lot of places. It's used actually to make molds, but uh, since the hardness is good and uh, the curing properties are good, you can also use it to, to pour things like engine mounts or maybe even uh, suspension uh, bushings or stuff like that. So uh, how to use this? You need a obviously in a container where you pour board both of the parts of the polyurethane in you pour them in slowly and you need to mix them in very well once they have been uh, mixed well uh, I'm using a, a container that has a small funnel so it's going to make the pouring a lot easier and you have to pour it in uh, very slowly to avoid air bubbles being created inside that's very important because if you get air bubbles in I mean you already know what happens it's not as good as it's, as it's supposed to be I've also bought some red dye to make this, you know, race car red or something. It doesn't do, of course, anything and it's completely optional. I just did it for, for appearances. So, uh, once you have poured the polyurethane in, you're going to need to leave it uh, 16 hours. This is the case for this product. Some products go for 24 hours. Some even ask for 48 hours. So, uh, just be very careful of the instructions of the product. Uh, follow them closely and you should be able to get good results with a setup that is similar to this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour this, mix it, actually first mix it in and then pour it into the mounts. So wish me luck.
I think that should that should do it. And now I'm ready to pour. So a few other notes before pouring this. Uh, I already said this, but I'm going to repeat it because it's very important. You need to pour this as slowly as possible to give the polyurethane the opportunity to get rid of all the air bubbles. As you can see, the, the product is designed in such a way to get the air bubbles out, but still, soil pouring is very important. And number two, maybe even more important, is once you have poured these and left them to set, uh, the temperature they need to be left at needs to be at least 23 degrees Celsius, which means you cannot do this when it's cold or, or in a cold place. Also, keep them away from the sun. So as soon as I pour them, I'm going to pull down shades and I'm going to leave them to set. So, it's the moment of truth and it's time to pour these babies. So once you pour it and before it's set, make sure the pin is 100% centered and if it's needed, just move it a bit. Okay. Hey guys, here we have them, four engine mounts, full of liquid polyurethane, okay? I'm gonna leave these to dry now and report back to you with the results as soon as they're dry. So, see you in 16 and a bit hours. So, we're back in the garage and as you can see, the polyurethane is 100% dry now. And I have to say, I am very happy with the results. I'll show you that these things are now rock solid. You will not get this out no matter what you do. And as you can see, compared to what rubber was like before, this is much stiffer, but it's also a very little bit forgiving. So, as I said, a very nice compromise. Now, so, you can consider these finished now, or if you want, you could use the pictures we took before and maybe make some drills inside the polyurethane and try to emulate the shape of the stock rubber and try to emulate in which way the engine and the mount uh, basically flexes under, under loads. So, some drawbacks, to be honest, the cardboard, uh, it can be removed with, with water but it, it takes a bit of an effort to, to get it out, so maybe a release agent on the cardboard side might be a good idea. As you can see, one of them also spilled over, but uh, again, the, the, the integrity is 100% intact. It just doesn't look perfect. If you want, you can get a, get a knife and get this off, or I don't know how to get rid of the, the spillover. But since the point of this isn't hooks, it's function. I think this doesn't matter as much as you can see this one and this one and this one are very nice. This one just spilled over a tiny bit but it has the same integrity as the other ones. Okay there you go. A DIY way to make your car a bit more responsive and, and sportier by making yourself some DIY polyurethane engine mounts that are quite a lot cheaper than what you can find in the aftermarket but are also uh, relatively easy to make. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to share, like, comment and subscribe.